Amen. As we standing, we open our Bible into the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3. We're talking about growth. 1 Samuel 3, and uh, from verse 1, we're reading together. The Bible says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now, in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and vision were quite uncommon. Sounds like the present time. One night, Eli was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel, yes, reply. What is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know God. The Lord, because he had never had a message from the Lord God Almighty. So the Lord called the third time, and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the bar. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls you again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel replied. And we go to verse 19 and continue to 21. 19 says, and Samuel grew up. Say, Samuel grew up. The Lord was with him. And everything Samuel said proved to be reliable. And all Israel from then in the north to Beersheba in the south knew that Samuel was confirmed as prophet of the Lord God. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh and gave messages to Samuel there at the tabernacle. Bless your word, Almighty God. Bless your people. In Jesus' mighty name. And then we say, Amen. And you may be seated. Welcome once more. We're talking about growth. And this year of uh, divine extension, the Lord God Almighty wants you to grow. I started by telling you that all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. God is a good God. He's a God that promises to you. And then he's a God that will always fulfill his promises. In the first text I use, in the book of Exodus 23, from verse 20 upward, I told you that God told Israel, and he's still telling you today, that I won't do it in one year. I won't do it in one day. Why? Because the land will be too big for you. The space will be too large for you. And the birds will move in and they will devour you. And the Lord says, little by little, I'm going to do it for you. I want you to grow so that you feel the land. You need to grow for several reasons. The number one reason, because everything that God created, He gave that ability to grow. He says to Adam and Eve, He said to you that He created, multiply for the earth, increase and subdue the earth. You have to increase because you born of God. Number two, several passages. In his word, he's giving you a command to grow. Second Peter 3, verse 18. He said, Grow in what? In grace and in the knowledge of God. And our Lord Jesus Christ gave us a good example that you have to follow. In the book of Luke, chapter 2, 
verse 52. This is what the Bible says. And the son Jesus, the child Jesus, grew in what? In stature. Number two, he grew in wisdom. Number three, he grew in favor with God. Not only in favor with God, in favor with, with man as well. And we say we're starting a series of teaching. What we want to teach you how to grow in knowledge. We want to teach you how to grow in wisdom. We want to teach you how to grow in stature. We want to teach you how to grow in favor with God, in favor with man. Teach you how to grow spiritually, how to grow emotionally, and also teach you how to grow in your possession that you've got. You know what? When I went to the campus, I met this lady. You know what I had? Nothing. That's about 40 years ago. But you can't be still having nothing 40 years down the line. No. Because you've got more responsibility. We have to grow in position. And we started now on teaching you how to grow in what? In knowledge first. And we expanded very well. Are you growing general knowledge? Everything that you do, there's a science behind it. Maybe you didn't know. If you want to take good pictures, there's a science behind it. You know, sometimes I look at the pictures which are taken in Johannesburg and the pictures here. Make a big difference. Have you seen that? You don't notice that. Big difference. So you have to grow in the knowledge you have to take pictures. Because the result shows. And some of the pictures you post here, they give it to you from Johannesburg. Everything that you do, there's a science behind it. If you want more productive, grow in the knowledge. You want to cook? Grow in the knowledge of cooking. No wonder why your marriage is stale. You still cook like we are in Lemba. When you're in Cape Town. No! Still cook the same thing that your mother cooked. You can't even grow in the knowledge of putting together the books about cooking. Did you realize that? You never notice? There's a whole section. I'll take you there. If you want. But you pay your own transport. Take it to CNA. And then you're going to get books about cooking. And you cook something new. For your husband. For your wife. I'm in trouble. <laughs> wow. I didn't know I was preaching to myself. I'm in trouble. I have to go to CNA and buy and cook. I will testify one day. Amen. And then now, today, we want to focus on the knowledge of God. You know why we want to focus on the knowledge of God? Because that eternal life. John 17 verse 3 i gave them eternal life is to know you as the real true god and me jesus christ that you have sent is your christ not eternal life so what are we going to do we're going to expand on the text that we used and we're going to give you three points or four how to know god and jesus christ let's take the text that we've just read Many of you, I hope you are acquainted with the story of Samuel. This is a miracle, baby. We need a miracle. Do you have a baby? Take that book and meditate on it day and night. That book will show you how a woman was despised, you know, mocked, could cry to God and God listen to her praise. You know what is interesting about that passage? Even the men of God didn't get it. Sometimes you think we got all. No. When Eli look at her, he says, no, that woman is drunk. But God, no matter what, even me, if I misjudge you, God is the one that sees your heart. Amen. Amen. But this is the trick. Even if I misjudge you, 
But the word of God in my mouth will still have effect on your life. She didn't get very irritated. He just told the man of God, look, I'm crying because of the bitterness into my heart. And then you know he says, May the Lord of Israel that I serve, that Eli, grant you your request. Take seriously what I'm releasing on your life. It's important. I may be tired. It doesn't matter. Eli was even half blind. If you take it spiritually, you can say that he couldn't get it from the Lord. Because vision and prophecy were very rare on those days. But the Lord God Almighty is still behind the word of his servant to accomplish it. When it comes from our mouth, take it seriously in Jesus' mighty name. I want to remind some people here again. You know, I dreamed. I dreamed. And I shared that on Friday. You that are not coming on Friday, you're losing a lot. I was pregnant. Huh? Term pregnant. I was just about to deliver. Then I asked the Lord, I'm a man. How will I deliver? The Lord showed me like there's a lot of you that are pregnant with a project, with a whatever the Lord has put into your heart. This is the time to deliver it. In Jesus' mighty name. It's going to come out. But when you deliver, you must know that every woman that goes to deliver, she goes into labor. It's not, oops, oh, the baby is out. Maybe that you ought to expect, oh, oh, he's out already. No! You need to go into labor. You need to work so that you bring that baby to pass. So I encourage you now, this is a time to start going into labor. But some of you as well, I'm prophesizing over you. You may not be able on your own to bring that project out. I pray so that the God Almighty will send gynecologist into your life who will take you they will scissorize you they will do a cesarean section and they will take it out in Jesus mighty name I dreamed again and I share that and I dreamed like I was taking my daughter Matt, to the airport to travel in a foreign country to go live there everything was set up and I was just taking it to the airport and the Lord showed me it's not only her physically, it's for all of you that are sons and daughters on this household. In Jesus' mighty name. You don't have to stuck to all men as put as boundaries. The whole earth belongs to the Lord God Almighty. From Australia to China. From Japan to California. Yes, it belongs to the Lord. From Chile to Canada, it so belongs to God Almighty. He's the God that created you. As it says in the Bible, from one man, Adam, he created you. He created all of us. And he's the one that determines the boundaries of your habitation. It's not Putin. It's who is that one? Biden or Biden? Biden. Where is he from? China? Oh, it's not Unjin Chang. Is it Unjin Chang or something like that? It's the God that determines the boundaries of your habitation. I've seen people just deciding within a month and they travel and they now, nah, I've even visited one of them in America, settled in his own place, just decided because he believed this word that is the God Almighty that determines the boundaries of your habitation. Amen. We're talking about growth. You notice that? Talking about growth. So this baby born from that miraculous encounter is called Samuel. And the mother decided that she's going to dedicate that baby to the Lord. So she did. And that baby was serving the Lord on side of uh, the man of God, Eli. When we start here, I want to show you that everything that you see in the life of people, they grew into it. It's not that they started that way. No. 
ne, 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 ne. They grew that way. I was traveling with a woman. She was in front of me. She had two small babies. Two beautiful twins. I don't know if they were twins or not. And I'm watching this lady. Those two boys, you know, they were tired. And next to them, there were all these big guys, you know, like they were go. Then when I was talking about growth, the Lord just showed me. It just dawned on me. There's all these big guys that are putting the what they was a poor time. They were so small as those ones. Sometimes you don't notice. You've even forgotten that you were a baby one time. You couldn't even remove your diaper. Hmm? You can't remember that you cried for food. Give me food. Give me food. That's us. Amen. Everything is to grow. Whatever God has got for you, you have to grow into it. This baby, Samuel, you see from that experience that he served God along another man. He was serving God, but serving another man. If you ever served somebody in your life or not. If you have never done it, there's something missing. No wonder why you can't get your own. Because the Bible says, if uh, you're not faithful with what belongs to somebody else, who will give you your own one? I was faithful into the ministry of my spiritual father, Gabriel Veidaka. I served that man. Amen. I stopped my practice to drive them. Drive her. As a specialist surgeon. With an MBA. But I was interpreting in church. If you served someone or not. Joshua. Was called. A servant. Of Moses. Are you called in this church? The servant of DMS. Oh, pastor, you can't talk like that. Yes. You can't talk like that. No wonder why you're not well coached. You learn to be a servant of someone. Finish and clear. That's what this centurion said to Jesus. I understand authority because I am a man of authority and I know how to stand under authority. If you ever been submitted to someone, no wonder why you don't grow. You cannot have people submit to you if you never submitted under someone. You just can't go. Whatever it pleases you. No. Doesn't work that way. Even children, when you grow up in my house, if you start coming in and going out without telling me where you're going, do you see that? Kick you out. My house. You have to tell me when you come and when you go. And you keep to you keep your word. Amen. <laughs> I remember one time. You know, I've got one son. I still wanted him to stay at home. You know, he said, No, I'm going. I'm gonna live on my own. Because he didn't want to tell me when he's coming. And when he's going, bye, he's get grown up. Bye bye. <laughs> and I will pray for you. You know what? It's amazing. It's amazing. When it gone out of your house, you don't worry. Don't wake up at midnight and say, he, he, something has happened to him. No. But when they live into your house, if they're supposed to come at 8, then 8.30, you start getting worried. Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe. No! You don't want? 21. Amen. So he served God by serving another person. Number two. The Bible says he was staying in the tabernacle. Next to the Ark of the Covenant. Understand that and put it in the new covenant. He was 
saying it, but now the Lord God is in you. But you're still ignorant of him who is in you. You do your own things, you don't even notice him. You understand? No one why we don't grow. Because we don't spend time with him. He's in us, but we don't spend time. You know, that's reality. You know, I understood it. My late mom, at one said she was very old. I wanted to live with her. I said, mom, come over here. We'll get a nurse to look after you. She'll cook for you. She will even bath you. She will even brush your teeth if you want to. Lock her life. But she will come and then she will insist on going back. One day I confronted her. I said, Mom, I don't understand. Why do you want to go back? I said, I'm alone. What do you mean alone? You with me? He said, No, I'm not with you. You and your wife, you go out in the morning. And you come at night. You leave me alone here. With this lady, we can't talk the language. We're just doing the, the, the sign. At least, when you come visit for a week, I spend more time with you when you come visit for a week than when I sit at your house for four months. You are nearly crying. I look at it, I find that is a reality. You can be with a person without being with a person. The Lord lives in you. Are you really with the Lord? Even if you claim he lives in me, he will never leave me nor forsake me. Are you really with him? Here's my second reality. My son, he jokes a lot. I don't know where he got it from. So one day, he comes. He was at college still. He comes to visit the mom. Then he says to the mom this. Where is the guy that comes and visit you here and then so the man was puzzled he said which guy <laughs> he said dms where is he he comes and do and visit you here and then can you imagine you can be your own ass with your own wife and then you come and visit here and then <laughs> you'll have to be there amen that's how you grow when you have the Lord, then you grow in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, the Bible clearly says Samuel did not know the Lord. Sometime we would like to say we know the Lord. It's a progressive thing. God reveals himself to you and me progressively. Amen. It's not like I spent 40 days, 40 nights in prayer. The Lord has revealed himself to you. Maka. Sometimes you don't understand Maka. Maka, it means you lying. In one of uh, the China language. You have to spend time and time and time and time and time with the Lord and he reveals himself to you progressively. Not only when you spend time, it's also what you do with the revelation that is given you. He can't just tell you things and you ignore them, you do your own things. He won't reveal himself to you. And then this man called Samuel because of dedication. God is faithful. If you dedicate to him, you spend time with God in his word, in his church, with his own brothers and sisters believers God will reveal himself to you more and more Amen. if you don't you will lie to us I know how the Lord speaks to me you lying you don't know give him time to reveal himself to you and then that's how now the Bible says Samuel grew when he grew in the Lord, there is evidence. You cannot be grown into the Lord. There is no evidence. No. These are the evidence that happened into the life of Samuel. The Lord spoke to him more and more. 
Amen. The Lord spoke to him more and more. And it goes on to say, there is nothing that came out of his mouth that the Lord will never fulfill. Other version says, there was nothing uh, that he said that fell to the ground without accomplishing what he has said. That's where you become now. You know the Lord. He knows you. You have grown up. And then he says he's behind the word of his servant to fulfill them. And the other result now. He says everyone knew. Everyone did what? Knew. From Bathsheba up until the that Samuel was a prophet of the Lord God Almighty. You may try some gimmicks. You may try to take some pictures. You may try whatever you want. But it's the Lord God Almighty. When none, he fulfills whatever into your life. That uh, you will be, according to the principle of the kingdom, known to everyone. You may try to do this. You may try to do that. But if you grow in the Lord... People will notice that there is a man of God. There is a prophet of God. I had an experience once. I had a couple that brought their father to me for treatment. The story wasn't clear. They came, they came from Venda in the North Day. And they came and showed me in Johannesburg. And I puzzled and I asked them, how did you know about me? So that you'll travel with this man all the way from Venda Day to come and so that I treat him. They say somebody spoke to you about, spoke to us about you. And then that's where they came to see me. And you know what? What is puzzling in that story, I gave them some investigation, some tests to do, and then disappeared. I've never seen them until today. And then that story puzzled me a lot. I started praying. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, if you grow, that I was, I'm so passionate when I'm teaching about growth. If you grow into the things of God, I'm just showing you a glimpse of what is going to happen into your ministry. There will be people coming from all over. They will be coming seeing you because you have grown into the things of God. Amen. Because you've grown into the things of God. I was pleased in Johannesburg into a service. You know, you know when we say, hey, 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 we sing, everything is double, double. I'm praying for all of you and I'm checking your face. And sometimes in a service like this, I say, hey, I know all these people. I, they all regular face. You know, I get a little bit disappointed. Not with you. But of the fact that there is no face that I don't know. For me, my ministry doesn't grow. Are you with me? Michelle, Shirei, Jonath. Oh, okay. Irregular. Okay. You will see me, even my face become a little bit downcast a little bit to say, ah, no, there's no one that I don't know. You understand? Because I want to grow. And then this man grew into the knowledge of God. Three ways of growing into the knowledge of God. Number one, you will grow through the knowledge of God by just observing nature. Number two, you go through the knowledge of God by doing what? Studying the scriptures. Number three, I'll go through the knowledge of God through the circumstances that the devil may take you, you may take yourself, and God may take you through some circumstances, work with you through that, that you know me better. And number four, you'll know him through revelation. Let's touch on the first one today only. And on this point, I won't remember it too much. It got me my first video that went viral. Is knowing God through nature. You know, I've realized that many of our children, they don't know nature at all. 
They've been born in urban areas. They grew up in cities. You know, everything they see is not really nature. It's something that is uh, been changed by man and all. They, they live in high-rise building. They go to water into tapes. They think water is someone cooked under the, the what? I don't know how they grow up. So it becomes very difficult for them to know God through nature. But take an experience for yourself and try and discover really what uh, nature is. Each time a person sees nature for what it is, he discovers God. I don't know. Through some connection of my workplace, I've been to game reserve. I've gone through this game reserve. I observe animals. They talk to me about some plants and all those kind of things. The way they function, you will really see that there is a God that has created all that. I spoke about volcano the last time. You know, we got a city in the DRC. Where you've got volcano. Do you know how it happens? Look at the tsunami. You will see that there's a God. Sometimes when you go on the sea. I don't know if you've gone. I don't know if you do it in Cape Town yeah? But Durban is a good port. You can go from Durban to Norway. About a day or a weekend. And then you sit on that dock of that uh, big ship. And you watch the sea. At night especially. It's all quiet. And black everywhere. And you realize how small you are. Compared to the wonders that God has done. If you've been to a big mountain. Even you here. And you go on that top of the mountain. That you call Table Mountain. You stand there. You've got this ah experience. To see that no. There is a greater than me. That's God Almighty. When you go. If helicopter. Sometimes, you know what? Let me tell you a joke about the helicopter. I told my son, I said, You know, I've been in Kinshasa. I'm puzzled about that city. The traffic jam is such that, you know, it's impossible to move from one place to another. I got an idea. You could start this business. Buy two helicopters. You know, like what you do in Cape Town here? Take people around the city, huh? heli choppers. You take them into Kinshasa and then from Gombele to the airport all the time. We're going to make a lot of money and going to make a big name for ourselves. I was very excited. You know what he told me? He says, hang on dad. They do crash, isn't it? Remember Kobe Bryant? I said, no man. Don't think about those kind of things. <laughs> Kobe Bryant is Kobe Bryant. We won't crash by in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I was talking about discovering God through nature. If you go on into a helicopter flight and go around, even in the forest, and see some of those rivers, it looks like someone has drawn them nicely. I've never been in winter. One of the parts of the world that I like the most is called Switzerland. You go into the Alps Mountain. You know, it's so beautiful. And you see those roads that they've made there. You stand there, you say, no, God is great. You discover God through nature. Every single person that sees the wonders of life, of nature, will discover God. Let me give you some verses as we close. Let's go into the book of Psalm. Psalm 19. Read it with me. It says this. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The sky displays crafty manship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard. Yet a message has gone throughout the earth. And a word to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete urged to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and for it goes to another hand. Nothing can hide from its heat. Can you see? 
all these they speak about the wonders of our lord god almighty yesterday i took a walk along the sea i watched all those waves coming through and i was just absorbing the greatness of my god is great it's my prayer so that you will know him that eternal life you will know him for who he is and then you'll start seeing things happening into your life stand where you are we want to pray together just pray open up he say oh god almighty reveal yourself to me i want to know you i want to grow in your knowledge in the name of jesus christ 